The goal of this application is that we can draw a line in a cut software and then uh, based on that line generate a truss um, and to this truss we want to apply some loads and then automatically be able to say whether this truss is able to cope with these loads. Um, we'll be using a cut software to draw a line, it can basically be any cut software, um, and then a grasshopper to uh, generate the truss and also to analyze um, whether it's uh, strong enough. And we'll use, of course, Victor as an integrator between these two. So there are two ways of actually starting the application flow. Uh, first is to build a custom integrator, which uh, uh, can be used from within the CAD software. So basically what you do is you, you draw a line and then you push a button and then that line is uh, uploaded to Victor or you can upload a line uh, straight into Victor. Uh, and in this example, it will be as a DXF, but it might also be possible to do it as a JSON, for instance. So let me uh, show you how that looks. Uh, there we go. I just selected a uh, DXF file. Which is now uh, uploaded. And there's been some pre-processing, so these are already uh, filled in. Um, if we would have pushed the line straight from the cut software, we would also come up uh, into this screen. Now we can change these settings, but uh, they are fine for me. So I'll be pressing update. And what happens now is we get a visualization of a truss. Uh, and um, what basically happened is that we have set some configurations and then we press the button and the beam generator script started running on Grasshopper, which returned us a, uh, a design for, for the truss. And well, this is very simple, but it could also be maybe a little bit more complex. Um, another way of uh, doing this is because not every uh, designer maybe wants to draw a line. Maybe there are some designers who already know exactly how the truss needs to look like, and that's no problem. They can uh, design it then in their CAD software and push the whole construction. So what you're basically doing is we are skipping the run beam generator script step, and we are straight going into the visualized result. So in that case, the designer would see it's uh, his truss over here. Um, if we go back to the flow, the next step is to set loads and supports. Okay, so let's do that. We go to the supports and loads tab. Um, and we want to set some supports at the start of our truss and at the end of our truss. And also we want to have a point load of 100 kilos. And we want it to be in the center. It's a 3 meter beam. so. I'll do it at 1.5. And then we've got some distributed loads. Um, let's say it starts at zero. It has a length of one meter. We'll set the spacing. So this is actually the, the spacing between the, the point loads, which make up the distributed load. And then we'll set a, uh, uh, this is the load of kilogram per meter. So in this case, we'll have a total load of 200. If I'll update, the view, then we'll be able to see the trust, the sorry, the supports, the point loads, and the distributed load. And there we go. Okay, cool. So, what we want to do now is test whether this truss is able to cope with the uh, applied forces, with the applied loads. So we want to do the analysis and therefore we go to the deformed structures tab and we press update. Now on the back side, what's happening is we're basically sending some information to Grasshopper where the analysis script is run and then it returns us some uh, visual outputs. There we go. 
Okay, great. Uh, in red, you can see the original structure. Um, let me turn that off. And there's a deformation emphasizer, so we can have a better ID of uh, where uh, the structure is bending. I increase it a little bit. And then um, we have a color scheme to show the unity checks. In this case, uh, the construction is able to cope. Highest value is around uh, 0 0.3, let's say. So uh, it, it will not break, though. <laughs> it does look like it right now. Um, but it doesn't. And uh, yeah, there you go. So this is great. We now have uh, the... We've run the analysis and... Uh, um, we can see that our construction will be able to cope with uh, the loads but maybe we also want to get these uh, loads and supports that we have generated back into our uh, cut software so that's also uh, possible that you can pull the construction back in uh, also if you maybe think of a way of, uh, of the of a scenario where we didn't push the construction but where we just pushed the line then okay, I want to get this generated construction also back into my cut software. So that's possible as well, uh, straight from the cut software.